Hi guys, my name is Matsuki and welcome to my first impressions of the closed beta for Black Ops 6, the first weekend. So this video, first of all, is gonna be a little bit unique. It's gonna be a little bit fun because what I have done is after every single day of playing, I've recorded my thoughts of that day. And so, since I've been playing the beta for three days, I have three different little reviews. And you guys get to see how my opinion has basically progressed over this amount of time. So without further ado, let's get into my first day's impressions. Okay, so after pretty much playing one day of Black Ops 6, my rating of the game is kind of a low, maybe like 4.5 out of 10. To be honest, I did not really enjoy myself on day number one. I tried streaming it, as you guys may have seen, but pretty much that whole stream uh, turned into like a, a settings stream. And for the record, I did not pre-order BO6. That's not how I got access to the closed beta. I've actually been using my PC, using the Microsoft Store. So I got PC Game Pass on there for $1 Canadian, and Game Pass gives you access to the Black Ops 6 beta. But anyways, I, I spent maybe like two hours customizing my settings, and oh my god, there's just... There's so many graphical settings on PC, it's very annoying in my opinion. On stream, I didn't really figure out what was going on, what was causing me issues. Sometimes my input didn't feel right, like it was off. Other times the graphical quality went down a lot, but I ended up ending that stream because my game actually crashed. So what yeah, that also hell? wasn't a very good time. <laughs> it didn't really crash, it kind of just froze and wouldn't let me do anything, and then when I went to my task manager and closed the game through there, that's when I wasn't able to restart the game. My PC needed a whole restart so I ended stream unfortunately. But I played the rest of the night with my friends and by doing so I figured out VTuber Studio was taking up a lot of my VRAM I'm pretty sure is what it's called. And because I have so many applications open at once for my stream it was kind of causing everything on Black Ops 6 to hitch and stutter a little bit I guess. But yeah I spent a lot of the rest of the night just hanging out with my buddies. Shout out to Dutch Gang. I got all my settings reset. Everything surprisingly was running crispy smooth. I had a few good matches but but for the most part, uh, I did not really enjoy myself. To get into the sort of issues I had with the Black Ops 6 beta on day one, let's jump into the map design. Again, this is just my first day, so my opinion may change, but for the most part, I think the maps are a bit too small for the speed and the style of movement Black Ops 6 is going for. The movement speed is very fast, and the diving is just super long. Like, I think sometime on stream, I was jumping over the entire pool on that one map that kind of looks like Raid. And yeah, you heard me right. You can just jump jump over the entire thing. Oh my god, how does- how does one dive over an entire pool? What? What kind of super soldier is this? <laughs> it's some crazy superhuman shit. But then also the map design, it's very, very porous. Like there is next to zero lanes and the maps are for the most part medium sized, medium to small, I should say. The Kentucky Fried Chicken map was a very small one. Scud was pretty much medium. It was on the larger side, I guess, but I would probably call it a medium map. Deer Lick was definitely medium. And then the map that kind of looks like a raid was also a smallish medium map. Probably a little bit smaller than that like convenience store Kentucky Fried Chicken map. But yeah, because the maps are like just so porous, I found it very hard in some situations to reload my weapon without dying. I don't know if this game is just gonna be pretty much forcing everyone to run extended mags or not, but it felt like you'd get like two kills and then you go for a reload. And because the movement speed is so fast and the maps are so porous without any lane control. Enemies are just able to like sneak up on you or even just head on and rush you and just knock you out of the park. The game was super sweaty as well. I don't know if that's just a beta thing or not, but yeah, it kind of felt like hell. So my suggestion here would either, you know, be to redesign the maps, which I don't think is gonna happen at this point, you know, like make them bigger. And also, yeah, like the side note, the spawns were pretty awful. <laughs> For four years of development, this is garbage. <laughs> it's like this was intentionally done. It's like the shipmentification of Call of Duty. Bad spawns that just become a standard, huh? Oh my god. I don't understand the flow of this game at all. Like I spawned in the center of the map and there's enemies running behind my teammates up to me. 
What the fuck is this guy doing? Did you see his insane movement? Oh my lord. But yeah, you either change the map design or you just buff the reload speed across the board. I think guns need to either reload faster so you can get back into the action faster or the maps need to be designed in like this sort of like lane sort of fashion. That way when you're pushing up a lane and you get a couple kills, you're able to fall back on that lane without another person just instantly coming up from the side and shooting you down while you're defenseless. I found that this happened a lot on that raid style map, Deer Lick especially too, and even the Kentucky Fried Chicken map. So yeah, the, the overall flow of the game is getting like a 4 out of 10. Maps in general, like I hope that they are larger when we get access to the other. I think we're getting a total of 8 maps in the beta uh, across both weekends, but this weekend we only had 4. I hope that weekend 2s are a lot larger. But yeah, also like, oh my god. God, if this is what the 6v6 maps are playing like, I cannot imagine what these like 2v2 face-off maps are gonna play like in 6v6, because if you guys didn't know yet, which you should have known if you watched the COD Next event and the multiplayer reveal and the Call of Duty podcast, there's 16 multiplayer maps at launch, but four of those maps are the 2v2 gunfight maps that they're just throwing in 6v6, as if they're all like a bonus shipment maps. It's gonna be super annoying too, because you know, if four out of 16 maps are shipment, that means you have one quarter of a chance, 25% chance of getting one of those shitty tiny maps. I'm not looking forward to that. Next, I kind of want to talk about the omnidirectional movement. For those that don't know what that is, it's like 360 sprinting. So you can sprint left, right, backwards, and of course forwards as you always could. But yeah, sprinting sideways is definitely something I'll have to get used to. It feels very awkward as of right now. And then also like the diving and the sliding got a rework, so now you can like ADS when you perform those moves. A lot of people are diving off of high ledges while they're aiming down sights, you know, doing 360 trick shots. Let's go. <laughs> Come on, bro. This is all I want out of life. Is a fucking 360 new tube piece. Fuck. Huh? Oh! I thought you got it! Let's go! Oh. oh, imagine I got another one. Uh. Oh, I got another! Oh! Oh my god! Oh. I expect to see them on Twitter, buddy. Chat, I'd expect all the, the the homies to be sending me fucking nipple pics tonight. All right, that guy is who we're going for. Oh my god, I did it again! Holy shit! Oh my god! There, that's fucking three of them in one match. Oh my god, dude. Dude, that's it. That's it. I peaked. I fucking peaked. I hit three fucking 360 nade launchers. I'm in a Raffle Waffles video all in one week. Bro. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Cool shit like my friend Gravity did here. And then there's also like the whole soup line aspect to this. If you dolphin dive, you can actually like do a little like a barrel roll in the air instead of doing like the helicopter in MW2. And this also works well prone as well. It's basically the Rainbow Six Siege prone. You can go in your stomach or your back. And something annoying I found about the prone is that when you're ADSing and you try moving, you try strafing while you're prone, it feels like you're just stuck in molasses. It's like you don't move at all. I'm really not a fan, but yeah. Other than the omnidirectional movement feeling like kind of awkward, it's all right, I guess. It's nothing to die for. It just feels like it's gonna make the game super sweaty once it releases, and that'll kind of be like the new skill gap that turns this classic Call of Duty experience into a movement shooter. This is like the first Call of Duty that I think is actually gonna be a movement shooter. I wouldn't even say the Jetpack Call of Duties were movement shooters, but this one, in this one, the movement's just insane. There's also like corner splicing, which moves your camera around a lot. You'll basically like lean. The whole leaning aspect feels really good. I like that. It just like feels a bit more realistic, I guess. And it's really nicely implemented too. It just like feels right. But yeah, diving feels very spammed right now. Like the multiplayer trailer was not lying. When they showed off all that omnidirectional movement and the diving, like that is how much diving is in game. Like they weren't kidding. <laughs> I thought they were just overdoing it, you know, to have something going on on the screen. But no, that, that that's how people play. The game puts a lot of focus on the movement. And moving on to my next point, if you guys seen my stream the other day, watching the Black Ops 6 reveal, I think the thing that everyone in the comment section, even, and even 
to myself like that we really wanted to see more of was the meat shield gameplay and it disappointed me so much. You only get like five or six seconds to hold someone when you get them into like a meat shield, which does not feel rewarding for what you were able to like pull off there. Like an execution, when you pull that off, it feels rewarding. However, when you do the meat shield, you're in like a attack stance sort of state and your movement is very, very slow. So you're not able to like even get far with that six seconds of holding them hostage. And after that six seconds is up, you just kill them automatically. It's boring. And also the enemy can ping you in real time. They just have to hold square and there's a giant like little red triangle on you, a little red diamond or whatever. And when you are being meat shielded, like when I am the shield, I go into this like third person state. It's so, ew, it's so gross. I kind of like just wish you stayed in first person and it's kind of like a jump scare where like a hand just grabs your mouth and you're just being told like, shh, or, or just like threatened, you know what I mean? And you're forced to look at whatever they're looking at. And I don't really like the whole pinging system either. Either. I wish you had to like go into game chat to tell where you are, where you're being held hostage. And if there's like a timer on it, make it last like 30 seconds to a minute. Make it punishing for the person that got meat shielded, man. Like it's a skill issue. <laughs> Deal with it. I don't know. I was expecting a lot more out of it, but it ended up kind of being a lackluster feature. The meat shields also add just like a little bit of extra health to your character. Their own teammates can shoot their teammate and they will die, but it's like I don't know, it's almost not even worth doing. I don't really know in what type of circumstance I would use a meat shield in Black Ops 6 when the movement's like this insane and I'm forced to like, you know, be a stationary hit me target with a big red icon above me. <laughs> it's just not ideal. It doesn't feel rewarding. I find it not well thought out. And moving on to like weapon balancing, oh my god. <laughs> Again, four years of development and we already have like fucking meta SMGs that are killing people at range. How does this happen? How does this slide. There's this like AK-74U looking one. It's OP as shit. It kills so fast. And then it's also like insane at range with zero attachments. What the heck? And yeah, and because it's so good, all the sweats are using it and it's just making the game a lot more unfun. Which brings us into like the Black Ops 6 creator class, I guess. They've kind of stopped with the Modern Warfare 2 attachments that have pros and cons, and they're more so going for like a only pros approach, which is more so closer to classic Call of Duty, although I'm pretty sure some of the attachments have cons. Just think of it like Black Ops Cold War. Pretty much the same attachment system. But yeah, this sort of system I don't really care for, especially when the weapons level up very slowly. It just kind of makes it so that you feel very, very underpowered. And this game kind of got really of the whole attachment sharing system across different weapons. So in Mono for 2, if I unlocked the certain like suppressor on this one gun, I'd have it available for all the guns that have that suppressor. I wouldn't have to level them up all individually. But in Black Ops 6, the only attachments actually that do sort of transfer between all guns are the optics, nothing else, only the optics. So if I get a red dot on this gun, I'll have it on this gun. That's it. Oh, and getting into the perk system, which is actually pretty neat. You want to know why? Because I thought of this thing before MW2 came out. I was inspired actually by the Modern Warfare 2 trailers though. Basically, we got like a quick glimpse of what the Modern Warfare 2 perks were gonna be. Um, I'll play a little clip here in just a second, but I looked at one of the images and it showed like these perks connecting and in, into like a third perk. So it was like two perks that would like connect in the bottom and then below that's another perk. I thought if you run perk combos, you can get like a specific outcome. For example, if I ran the ghost perk with Cold Blooded, I'd unlock a secret third perk like Ninja or Dead Silence. Or if I wanted to run resistance perks like Flak Jacket and Tack Mask, I could get another bonus effect like Reduction to Streak Damage. But yeah, here's the clip. Hey, my name is Matsuki and I wanted to discuss a new pro perks idea I came up with after watching the extremely short 5 Days Until God Next Event teaser. This little PNG is what's causing so many new ideas to spark. As you can see, there is a SD bomb on the icon, and maybe certain modes have recommended perks, which is why they're linked together. I went back and thought, hmm, what if this is just a new perk system? You got double time on the left, and then you got fast hands in the perk 3 selected. The combo of these perks could grant you pro perk esque benefits. <laughs> Prestigious Key actually did really like this idea too, and a lot of his fans as well. What's the perk balance gonna be like? Are overpowered perks like Ghost and Dead Silence gonna be accessible through underpowered perk combos? 
Maybe Cold Blooded and Double Time grants you Ghost, but as a passive ability, only for when you're tax sprinting. So yeah, I, I found it really cool that that actually made it into a Call of Duty game. I'm very happy. The only difference with Black Ops 6 though, is that you have to run three perks of the same color to unlock your specialty perk. This sorta creates roles in the game, roles in your style of loadouts, and you have to run the same three colors to get it. Like if you run the blue and a red, you won't get the specialty perk at all, which kind of sucks but it is what it is and I think it'll just take some time to get used to and I haven't even looked up all the different combos yet. I'm still excited to learn them and utilize them to the best of my degree. Other than that, I have really been enjoying the music. God damn, that music carries the game and the sound design is really good too. I have nothing negative to say about that. However, the visuals! Ah, fucking god. We have these just wacky skins running around already in the beta. Brutus is electrocuted all the time. He just looks like he has a shock stick stuck up his ass, but nah, that's just his regular self. You can also like hear him on the map giving shout outs. It sounds like a zombie. It's not quite as annoying as like those little cat sort of things in MW3 that you can attach on the side of your gun, like a little teammate. <laughs> But it's still jarring. And even like Klaus, this guy's just like almost like the Titan skin from Call of Duty Vanguard. You can see all of his like red looking skin and his brain with his robot face. Like it just does not fit into the multiplayer. Obviously these are fan favorite characters from zombies though. And I have no problem with keeping those like in zombies itself. Although I don't really understand how Brutus lore is gonna make sense in zombies. I thought Brutus was like a boss guy. Like I, I kind of remember him in Black Ops 4 being evil. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I'm not really a zombies player. I don't really know why you'd be playing as Brutus himself. But it is what it is. The weapons as well, like the sh there's a shotgun variant that basically turns your shotgun into a wonder weapon that shoots blue electric waves of energy at you instead of bullets. If I have any clips of it, I'll try to show it on screen. If I don't, I'm sorry. <laughs> the other default operators look pretty cool though. I like how Stone had a glow up since Black Ops Cold War. And this also the other, other guy, I don't know his name anymore off the top of my head, but he kind of reminds me of Woods and he looks pretty cool too. The other apps are awesome, very 90s themed, era appropriate. And the maps, oh, they look good for the most part as well. I love the color palette on Scud. It's almost like, uh, I don't know, like pastel maybe? Like I wouldn't say it looks washed out, it just looks so calming. I love how it just like, the general vibe of it. It's very unique and nice as a desert map. And Deerlick, like that one, I love the color palette as well. It looks very pretty although there are some areas where the textures are eh, not as good, like the moss on this rock here. I noticed this like in the COD Next event and in game it is the exact same. It is pretty bad. <laughs> Kentucky Fried Chicken, it's not a bad looking map, although I think it could have looked a bit better if they put a bit more time into it. I wish it looked more like the Liberty Falls sort of map. I, w I wish it was more like the Liberty Falls sort of cinematic trailer that we got with Rick Toffin and like the background he was in. But no, they just kind of went for like a parking lot around the entire, uh, what would you call it, like chain of buildings, and that's all you play in. It's a bit, eh uninspired. And lastly, like the raid map, the sunset's beautiful on it. Even like the underground area where you have like the vents, very cool looking. And since we're talking about the raid looking map, I, I forget the name, I'm so sorry. Uh, there was something really unique about this map that I just adore. Much like Hacienda from Black Ops 4, we have uh, moving bookshelves again. So there's like secret entrances to get underground from one side, I guess. And that's through a bookshelf. And yeah, like once you're underground, so in vents actually, there is like a security system for the whole place that you can activate or deactivate. Basically activating it puts up these like bulletproof walls around the place. So on the windows and some doorways, it'll block off some flank routes, which is kind of how I wish this uh, map played like. I think it's a little bit too porous without them, frankly. So if you're ever in my party on stream, please activate the defense system or whatever the security system is. <laughs> activate it. Thank you. Moving on to game modes. Uh, I guess other than TDM and domination and whatever those regular game modes are, we also had a new game mode called uh, like HVT something, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> it's basically like Modern Warfare 2's HVT mode, except you have an HVT on both teams at the same time. So basically both teams are playing the game of cat and mouse. Some of your teammates are staying behind to guard the HVT while the other teammates are trying to kill the enemy's HVT. And by HVT, I'm talking about high value target. That's what it stands for. The high value targets are chosen at 
random, and once they die, they swap to a new player on the uh, same team. Killing an HVT gives you lots of score, and by staying alive as an HVT, you also gain a lot of score for your score streaks, which can be very valuable. I had one game last night, actually, where I think we had Gravity as the HVT, and he never died. We won that game so fast. We just kind of keep them in the back room of Deerlick. <laughs> oh, and then when we played on that raid map, we'd always get our HVT inside of the vents. <laughs> yeah, we'd, uh, we'd defend him like he's the president. We must stand united to defend our world against these invaders. I had a good time with the homies. They were the ones who carried the night for me. So yeah, overall thoughts of Black Ops 6 first day? Eh, it's okay. Was pretty disappointed giving it like a 4.5 out of 10, but my friends kind of were carrying my uh, way through. So with that said, I'm gonna go play some more Black Ops 6 with my homies tonight on stream. I will see you guys there. If not, here we are. Here's the final results of that. <laughs> howdy, howdy, howdy. All right. So uh, day two stream is over. I kind of streamed throughout the night. We got a seven and a half hour stream. Oh boy, that was a long one. <laughs> Overall, my opinions from day one to day two have improved a slight tad bit. Instead of still feeling like a 4.5 out of 10, I think I've raised my level of satisfaction to a 5 out of 10. I still find the map design to be too porous for the flow, and leveling up weapons is so gosh darn slow. However, I did change my FOV back down to like a 95, and I have been enjoying the game like just a lot more in comparison to day one. Like it's been a bit easier to keep track of my targets, but there is something else that I have noticed. On PC, aim assist feels rather broken. <laughs> And I'm not talking about how they reworked to the aim assist within three meters of enemies now, because if you guys didn't know, Black Ops 6 actually changed aim assist, so you no longer have a rotational aim assist within three meters, so your character's not gonna do a quick spin if you whiz right by someone, you just like bump shoulders, like there's no more of that. Which is kind of unfortunate too, because I did recognize this kind of as a problem when facing PC players, because PC players can't just spin around like that in close range, they have a hard time on their mouse when someone just runs right through them. Whereas controller players, it's just a breeze. You just move your analog stick and you kind of like stick onto the player because of the rotational aim assist. It rotates you very fast. And so my solution was basically to give PC players that rotational aim assist within three meters. But instead of doing that, they kind of went the opposite route and just removed it on controller. You still have like the default slowdown aim assist, but the rotational is just gone within three meters. And that has been a bit too jarring for me. Sure, it might be something I have to get used to, but older Call of Duty games are just gonna feel better because it actually has it. But no, the problem that I have with aim assist on at least the PC version of Black Ops 6 is that it feels like I'm not even tracking my target properly. During my stream last night, I actually went back over to Marvel Warfare 2 2022 just to see if like I've spent way too much time on Rainbow Six Siege and like the no aim assist on that game because Rainbow Six Siege has no aim assist. I wanted to see if the no aim assist had affected me negatively like as a player in Call of Duty, but no. I am snappy as hell in MW2, I am just a demon, had no issues. So then I hopped back on Black Ops 6, and oh my gosh, I'm still missing shots. It feels weird. And to make matters worse, there is no Modern Warfare style aim assist. So I don't know maybe if that is what's contributing to it. For the previous four or even five Call of Duty games, we've had the option as players to switch between Modern Warfare aim assist, Black Ops aim assist, precision, and focusing. So basically, if you're used to a different one other than Black Ops, Black Ops 6 is saying a big fuck you to your face. And it's just so baffling because we have this Call of Duty hub that's supposed to be like reusing content between the games that like are on the hub itself, you know, to like give us more content and just basic freaking settings are not transferring over. The aim assist type of modern warfare should be in Black Ops 6, especially when it's just been there for five years now and we've been like able to build muscle memory around the one we chose. So yeah, it, it's just very annoying and inconvenient. I've also done a lot of sniping and sniping wise, I do have one point I wanna make here. I really wanna change the reticle on the sniper scopes. I feel like I just cannot keep track of the center of of the crosshair. It just like blends in and my friend uh, Jared was also having the exact same problem so I know it's not just me. Oh, I missed. Damn. Oh. Center. I wish you could change their reticles. Same. Just wait until the full launch buddy. And then you will be able no. to. I guess so. Yes. But I don't wanna. Refunding the game as you speak. 
I hope every fucking like site has a blue dot option. I just want to change my sniper optic so I can see the center of it easily. Oh. Here. That's what Jared was saying earlier. Yeah, yeah it just yeah. blends in so yeah. much. Yeah, like I want I the center coffee. to be like a thick red or black. I need that red. Mm, yeah. But yes, other than that, they haven't added any new game modes yet. But uh, for day three, they are adding 66 face-off maps, which I will be playing uh, tonight as well on stream. If you don't remember what face-off maps were, they were from Black Ops Cold War. It was basically 2v2 maps put into 6v6 respawn. So it's the shipment 24-7 experience in a nutshell. <laughs> oh, and before I forget, the meat shield gameplay in uh, Black Ops 6, I have had my eyes opened around it. There are some really cool things you can pull off, as uh, Jason here did. Oh, what a, why have my sniper out? Oh, nice. <laughs> I have the SPG hostage. Oh, no, I to jump into the Good idea. <laughs> I the elevator right. there in HVT. So yeah, this is like the game mode HVT. We were playing that all night pretty much. Like <laughs> we kept Jason up to like 3 a.m. Messed up his sleep schedule, you know. What are friends for? But yeah, it, it's just like a really smart tactic to just grab the HVT when he's downed or in the air or whatever, however you grab him and then just walk him off the edge instead of finishing him. <laughs> That's crazy. And he's dead. Two more. Oh my God. Um, however, it does not change my opinion on the whole meat shield uh, mechanic. I still think you should be able to hold an enemy for a longer uh, duration. And I don't think I talked about footsteps yet, but uh, they've been very inconsistent. Like sometimes I will hear an enemy footstep, but it's just, it's so darn quiet. And then just like 90% of the time, I do not hear enemy footsteps at all. I think it's bugged, but I really don't know. And there is like a field upgrade. And strangely enough, there's a field upgrade in the game that lets you hear footsteps better. I don't think there's dead silence yet. So it's like dead silence is almost built into the game by default. And if you want to hear footsteps, you need to use this field upgrade, which I'm pretty sure is just like the dead silence field upgrade, where if you get a kill, it keeps its duration going. So that's kind of neat, I guess, but it also takes so long to activate it. Personally, I don't think it's very balanced to have no footsteps by default, especially when the map design is this porous and there's this many flank routes that you could be taking. If we want Call of Duty to go back to skill based gameplay, we need to have footstep volume on maps that are very porous. <laughs> That's just how Black Ops 6 is built. You're not going to be able to change these maps to make them more like lane based than they already are. Not. So the only solution is to buff the footsteps, right? And slow down the movement speed a little bit. I don't know if I talked about the movement speed yet either, but I kind of believe that this game needs to remove the tack sprint in order just to make the default sprint the default movement speed. Um, I think that would improve the flow of the maps and just like the general pacing. Tactical sprint in BO6 is just not tactical. It's it, it feels very much like filler. It doesn't serve a purpose. The game is not a tactical game. It is a movement shooter. Also, I was having some issues with the game where the whole screen would just go black as soon as I entered the match. I was able to select my loadout. I was able to die and whatnot, but I just could not see a thing. So instead of relaunching the game, I had my friend Twinkle be my eyes in game for me. He just like <laughs> led me around the map and whatnot. And then he ended up like screen sharing his uh, his point of view on Discord. So I was able to like get on top of the KFC building on, uh, what was the map called? Rewind. <laughs> yes, the Kentucky Fried Chicken map is called Rewind. I don't know why it's called Rewind, but I guess it is. Maybe that's one of the stores. I have no clue. But yeah, I got onto the roof of the KFC little building and uh, yeah, I got kicked for inactivity because I didn't shoot a bullet, even though I was just moving around the map. Um, game has issues that need to be ironed out for launch. <laughs> but yeah, shout out to Twinkle for being my eyes, homie. Thank you very much. Being able to see you is pretty nice. Other than that, there's not much really else to say. I've been using the Omni movement and just like the other t styles of new movement uh, a bit less, and that has helped me out a little bit more, I think. Um, sliding? I don't know if sliding really has much of a purpose in this game. It doesn't feel all that useful. And then the whole like diving mechanic seems more like a trick shot sort of thing. Uh, at least until I can get my aim on point more. I don't think I'll be using it that much. I think the most effective way if you were to use that little dive mechanic is while sprinting sideways and then diving sideways around a corner. It might give you a little advantage. Weapon wise, I think the, I think it was called the Ames Assault Rifle. That one has been pretty good. The uh, AK-74U, whatever it was called. Ah yes, it was called the Jackal PDW. That has been a ex 
extremely good SMG. It's still really good. Uh, my friend Nova actually got me to use one of the LMGs and that has been really fun as well. The LMG feels pretty slow movement speed wise, but uh, time to kill wise, it's pretty darn good. Shotguns feel pretty powerful. Pistols, not so much. The Dragunov sniper, I think I used it once in day one and that thing was not very good either. I've really been trying to like the AK-47, but that thing just, I don't know, not really working out too well. I think the XM4 or whatever the M4 is in this game is probably better. But yeah, that concludes my day two first impressions, or I guess I should say second impressions. Let's get into day three. Wah! Here I am again on day three. Treyarch actually updated the game to include face-off maps into 6v6. And if you guys don't remember what face-off is, it was from Black Ops Cold War, which is essentially all the 2v2 maps allowed in 6v6 respawn. So the maps that they did add to Black Ops 6 were Gala and Pit. Gala takes place in, get this, <laughs> a gala. It's a celebration event style map. There's curtains everywhere, and yes, you can shoot through them. And then there's this like centerpiece that's like a cylinder. You can get up top uh, from two staircases, or you can go indoors below the staircases and the rooftop. The other map, Pit, is taking place inside of a mine shaft. It's a figure eight style map with an overhead lane that you have to climb a ladder to get to, and then you go like along a pipe and you can get into the enemy spawn. Both of these maps are mirrored style maps. So basically, no matter what spawn you're in, it's the exact same layout. But that's kind of just 2v2 maps in a nutshell. There's no advantages, per se. Now, how they play is a totally different story. <laughs> yeah, so all of the maps are a complete clusterfuck. The spawns are messed up. You can see people spawn literally from the top of the Gaza, like, cylinder. <laughs> so talk about giving people a power position that literally spawn traps people. Like, it's incredible. It's just mind blowing how they can make a game mode like this and expect it to play well. As you can see, we can see people spawning in real time. Very nice, very nice. Love to see it, love to see it. Reloading. But hey, who's to blame? Is it the Call of Duty players that play Shipment 24-7 every year? Maybe it is! <laughs> Cause Shipment's like next to no better. These maps are just complete dookie nonsense made for the camel grinds. They take the camel grind, make it skillless, and devalue the entire experience. But camel grind aside, this beta does not have a camel grind. So playing these maps kind of felt like I was playing the regular 6v6 maps in this game that are already small to medium size and amplifying what was bad about them. Some of these maps already have not so great spawns. So giving us these face-off maps in the 6v6 game modes, it feels like I'm playing even worse maps than I already was. And I already wasn't enjoying the other maps that much. In my opinion, I think Scud plays the best, but it so happens to be the biggest map in the beta as well. And it's still like kinda medium-sized. Next, I'd say Skyline was pretty good too, but then again, I have some points in the game where I am getting spawn trapped. You take two steps and you die. And then after that, I'd say Rewind is next, but that one, it, it barely feels like a Call of Duty map. It feels just like I'm running around a parking lot that's around like a couple buildings. And then there's Deerlicked, which I think everyone just does not like that much. And it's the layout, purely the layout. I love the visuals of Deerlicked, okay? Don't get me wrong. This map looks amazing, but it just does not play well and it saddens me to my core. I wish it just like had another lane on the side of it that was like maybe some rocky formations or something. There's just something, man. Cause like the train aesthetic and like the overgrown bushes, it's just so cool. It's got like those stealthy vibes, right? But the map is anything but that. It's just clusterfucky and porous, but not as clusterfucky as the face-off maps. And as for how Pit plays, like there's a lot of spawn traps. <laughs> it's smaller than Gala, I think. You're pretty much in action 24 seven if you're on the bottom floor. And if you go up the ladder, you're kinda safe for up there. At least it feels like you have more of a fighting chance because you're not being constantly overrun. And since it's like a figure eight map, right? All of the lanes intersect in the very center. So yeah, like Gala gets maybe like a three out of 10 and Pit gets a one out of 10 from me. Other than that, I've been practicing my dolphin diving and that's been pretty cool. I think the most effective way you can dive in Black Ops 6 is when you're diving around the corner into like a hallway. You don't wanna dive into the open, like uh, say the parking lot on Rewind. Just just because there's so many angles that could see you, I'd say try diving into the hallway on Skyline because at that point you're focusing your aim on one position, which will help with your centering, and there won't be as many enemies able to target you. I've also been using the Amy's 86 now, and like since I unlocked it in my critic class, uh, beforehand I was just using like the default loadout, which has attachments on it, 
by like default it's like a Treyarch built weapon. In my custom loadouts I've been grinding it and leveling it up and it's a really good gun. I think it's really fun. But hey, I'm still getting outgunned by the Jackal PDW even when I get my first shots on. So uh, yeah, weapon balancing needs some work. But yeah, day three was really fun. I actually got into a stream uh, with a lot of my followers. They joined my party. I might be using some of their gameplay in the background here. Uh, shout out to you guys. But yeah, other than that, they only added the face-off maps today and there was nothing else uh, really noteworthy or anything else that has changed in my opinion. However, an update did just go live for day four, which touches up upon the footsteps in the game. So hell yeah, it's not just me. They were actually bugged or just not working properly. Basically now the footsteps are louder. They are more prioritized in the audio mix. Sliding is also louder and the self-inflicted hit markers are a bit quieter. So hopefully that makes a big difference. I can't wait to try it out. Let's get into it. I'll see you in day four. Holy moly, it is now day four and oh my god, the servers are complete trash. It's not just me, everyone was getting these packet bursts and I... <laughs> Yeah, get this. On day three, I decided to upgrade my Wi-Fi so that the next day I would be able to have, like, better connection, right? And, um, ooh, I get on the next day, I'm not streaming, so that there's no, like, uh, bandwidth problems, and I'm still getting this packet burst, man. So yeah, thank you, Black Ops 6, for making me upgrade my Wi-Fi, I guess. Um, I at least the streams will be in better quality for weekend number two, so like, I I'll see you guys in the free open beta as a less pixelated character. But anyways, I'm still having issues with, uh, fucking input devices. Black Ops 6 on PC, for some reason, just automatically makes my input device switch to my mouse just at random. And the thing is that makes it awful is that it does it without me like noticing. And then once I get into a match, I cannot switch it. It is locked. You have to go back to the main menus and then switch it there and then find a match. It's it's such a headache. And it happened like several times on my last stream. Also for day four, I ended up uh, moving my sensitivity back up to 1111 and I was having some luck with it. I found a new favorite gun, the AK-74, not to be confused with the AK-47. <laughs> They're totally not the same gun. Uh, skill-based matchmaking is still insanely sweaty. Probably my worst day was day four. So many people are just using the Jackal PDW now. I don't know if Cherik have said anything about, like, weekend number two, like, if they're nerfing it or not. I guess we'll find out. Hopefully, I mean, the thing is fucking broken. And speaking about broken, oh my god, these spawns are awful. <laughs> it's not just the tiny maps. Like, no, Face Off had a lot of shipment-style spawns where you can literally see people getting burst into existence in front of your eyes. But, uh, no, the, the same thing happens on skyline. It's abysmal. For four years of development, like, what have we been doing? <laughs> I've seen uh, some discourse around this subject too, like, people have been blaming Infinity Ward's engine for this, and ultimately Infinity Ward as well, because people just can't, like, keep their hate boners to themselves, but alright. But if you look at the past, like, five Call of Duty games, Modern Warfare 2019 was the first one on this new engine, and its spawns were, like, squad spawns. It was pretty good from what I remember, like, spawn trapping was at an all-time low on that game. Now, Cold War wasn't built on this engine, Engine, so Cold War is the only one excluded, which was also built by Treyarch, so of course they haven't used this engine yet. But since Cold War, we've had Vanguard, which was built by Sledgehammer Games, and they tweaked their spawns throughout the life cycle of Vanguard to the point that they were happy with them. I know after the update, Exclusive Ace really liked them too. Next we had MW 2022, and that one had perfect spawns in my opinion. I don't remember a single spawn trap on a just regular sized map. There were some issues with maps, like spawn locks, I will say, but it was on a remastered or a remade map from COD 4. They really should have just changed the layout a little bit. It would have fixed it. I think that map was called Strike, but I could be wrong. MW3, of course, was after that. And uh, no, this this game did not have as good of uh, spawn logic, I will say. I feel like it got a lot worse. And I, I also kind of think this was kind of at fault of Sledgehammer Games themselves. They did say they want to shipmentify the multiplayer of that game. All right, so I was a little bit mistaken here. It was actually for uh, Call of Duty Vanguard, not MW3, but it's still Sledgehammer Games, so we know they're sort of designed design philosophy going into things. I would say given how MW3 turned out, things have not really changed as much, so I guess their logic still applies. So here's their logic. We're gonna be doing Blitz. I remember when we were just first talking about it, the idea of making every map into shipment. I love that. <laughs> uh -huh. But having a, a map the size of Red Star feel like shipment if you're having that, that level well. of combat yeah. pacing is is what's really fun because it's crazy. it's different map by map it's so much fun to just go in and you're not even worried when you're getting killed because mm -hmm. you just
So yeah, uh, shipment, you don't have to worry about where you're getting killed because there's action around every corner, I guess. Like, this is the shipment mindset. You're worried when you're getting killed because you just get killed and respawn and kill someone else constantly. It's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, you just don't have to worry about where you're getting killed because you die and respawn. You die, spawn, die, spawn, die, spawn, die, spawn, die, spawn. You get the point. It's turning multiplayer into a casual shooter. They do not care about balanced gameplay, being able to do things objectively right. So when there's no way to do something objectively right, so then there is no skill factor. So yeah, saying uh, Infinity Ward is to blame for yet another issue with modern Call of Duty games when it is clearly the developers like Sledgehammer Games actually seeking out bad spawns like this. It's just like copium. I'm sorry. <laughs> Infinity Ward is not a boogeyman. Stop using them as an escape goat. Thank you. Sorry, little side tangent over. Let's get back to the video. Hopefully I find it because that is just a golden opportunity to expose them. And yeah, of course, Sledgehammer Games was also into like the whole face-off style maps with like all the houses. You got Das House, Stash House, Shoot House, Ship House. Oh shit, sorry, I meant Shipman. But yeah, now we have Black Ops 6 and uh, ooh, what was that one leaked map? Oh yeah, Nuke House. Huh, I'm seeing a trend here. If I didn't know any better, I'd say they're trying to shipmentify this multiplayer as well. The just regular spawns and the, and the map size of the game are on the medium to small end. Even their filter says that they're medium to small on the quick play. This game doesn't have large style 6v6 maps, which like the majority of the OG CODs at least like, <laughs> I think had a quarter of large maps, if not a little bit more. I think most maps in COD history have been around the medium to large area. If we look back at like the OG Modern Warfare 3, the only small map in that game was Dome. And Dome is not really that small. Like Dome is larger than this game's small maps. Maybe not Scud, but I'd say every single other map in Yo 6 so far in the first weekend of the beta, Dome is larger than them. And maybe that's not like larger by measurement per se. I think that it just takes a longer amount of time to traverse the map. What matters at the end of the day is how uh, fast the movement is combined with the size of the map. If Dome was added to BO6, it would be playing like two times faster, just because the movement's that much faster, so it'll feel like a smaller map. But yeah, spawn logic wise, I think Treyarch having four years of development time, and this is like what we got, that, that's kind of a big red flag. I don't think you can blame the engine at this point. Now, I believe there are some people, some uh, leakers on uh, Twitter saying that it is the engine's fault, but hey, these guys are biased sources. I do not really trust them. When other games on this engine, like Modern Warfare 2 2022, have good spawns, I don't see why Black Ops 6 can't. All these developers are working on the same hub together, and yes, I said together because they are. They're collaborating. They shouldn't be running into these issues. But yeah, the only other couple things that I wanted to mention uh, about Day 4 in my review are that uh, I did discover a new ability, a new movement ability. Ooh, exciting. You're actually able to slide into a prone stance in this game. It's really cool. It feels really good too. Like you just, uh, you tap your slide button and then you hold it at the same time. Well, not at the same time, but like right after. So it's like a tap hold. And so your character just like literally slides into a prone stance. It feels so satisfying. I love it. So yeah, at least this game gets some points for that. Other than that, I have this hot take that this game is just being like heavily carried by the music and the sound design. Black Ops 6's music is literally designed to be hype beast mode. And oftentimes, just like how the HUD can like dictate your first impressions of a game, so can music. And sometimes that trumps game design. For example, Call of Duty Ghosts, it was really disliked by the majority of the COD community for its time, but it has one of the most underrated, untapped potential in its perk system. But the music? Like, while it is nostalgic for the people that like it, it's definitely not hype beast music. And the same goes for Infinite Warfare, my favorite Call of Duty game. The multiplayer music is not hype beast music, that is campaign music. Some of it's a little bit sad, and then other parts of it are like heroic and perhaps mischievous. Now, I, I may love some sad music, but not everyone does. Apparently, it turns a lot of people off from the game, so what I think's going on with Black Ops 6 is a lot of the uh, negative aspects of the game, like the spawns, the awful spawns, aren't getting as much attention as they should be. Like, how does a game like Modern Warfare 2019 with the squad spawns have more backlash than this game that has spawn traps 24-7? And that, yeah, that's exaggerating a little bit, but spawn traps should not be in 6v6 maps, like, uh, by default. That's not a standard. 
even in Modern Warfare 2019 on maps that aren't large to the point that you're running like, a, you know, a kilometer before you find an enemy, and yes, that's an exaggeration too. Like Cheshire Park, that one was a good medium-sized map and there was no like spawn traps, but you know what Modern Warfare 2019 did have? Mid music, and I'm sorry if you like it. It is definitely not hyping anyone up to play the game. The most it can be is nostalgic. It's not attention grabbing. It's not a melody that you'll remember for hours on end. Black Ops 6 music, on the other hand, I can do daily tasks with it on in the background and it's just awesome. Heck, I had a couple days at work this week and I just could not get it out of my head. What do they call that? Like a music worm? It's just that good and it rivals the Black Ops 2 menu music and that one's regarded as like the best in the whole COD franchise. Also, if I may interject, the streak system in Black Ops 6 here is a little bit weird. We have a scout pulse here. As you can see, it is the personal radar at 400 score. Typically, the personal radar was only at like two kills or 200 score previously. So um, it seems like everything has just been like ramped up in price for some reason. The RCXD streak, I will say I have used it already and it feels like shit. It is very hard to control. And and um, for 450 score, that is a ripoff. Um, UAV, it is 675. <laughs> Usually UAVs are like three kills. So this is really wild. It is like three and three quarters of a kill, right? Obviously you can like mix, uh, mix and match score of capturing objectives and assists in with your uh, actual kill score. Kill score is always 100 points. Assists are, I believe, 25, and then objective is probably around 25 as well. But yeah, the UAV is super high, and it is just baffling to me that the streaks don't loop in this game when you have this <laughs> pricing for the streaks. Like, <laughs> I feel like if you're just gonna ramp up everything, why not make them loop then at that point? It makes no sense why they're like this. Uh, counter UAV, also again, really high, 700 score. Uh, we have the Watch Helo, which has been a pretty decent streak. It's probably the best streak in the game. And then you have the Hellstorm, which is, oh my god, uh, Hilo is at uh, 1100 and the Hellstorm is at 1200, so it's very expensive. I don't think the Hellstorm is really worth it, personally. <laughs> but those are my th uh, opinions on the streaks in the beta. Not to mention, we're kind of in the honeymoon phase of Black Ops 6, so that's probably also contributing a little bit. So let me know what you think. Let me know if these uh, criticisms are fair. I'm going to be playing Weekend 2, the open beta, as soon as this video's done. The beta has already started and I'm a little bit late. I'm so sorry. But again, I, I upgraded my internet, so I should have higher quality streams. I hope you like those. Again, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like, subscribe, enable bell notifications, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out, homies.